Hello, this is Craig Mertens, Director of Product Education for Inktavo, the parent company of Graphics Flow, Inksoft, and Printavo. Welcome to the webinar today. Today's class, we're going to talk about what's new in Graphics Flow. And there is a lot of new things going on in Graphics Flow, which we're going to go through. And as we go through the new features and functionalities we've added recently, I'm also going to talk about some best practices and show you some power tips. Uh, I guess that's a word, power tips. Um, some of the hidden nuance and little tricks and neat things you can do within the platform. And let's get started. So first thing you're going to notice I've logged in is the new art drop is here. It is September 1st. So we dropped in the new artwork and I'm just kind of get, I'm, you know, I'm always tuned into what's coming because I, we're, we we're booked out six months ahead, but we usually like to take, stay 60 to 90 days ahead of seasonality. And so for instance, you know, we're not going to do Thanksgiving designs. In November, we're doing them in September. So this looks like some back to school themes, um, some outdoor themes, um, some fall sports. Uh, looks like we did some transportation themes. Ooh, it's a pretty nice looking uh, monotype, um, camping design, athletics, really good variety of artwork that we dropped in here. And, you know, obviously some back to school type things here. So this is the, the new art drop that we dropped in there. And you'll notice if you go over here, um, total number of templates is now 7,030. We went to, we hit 7,000 last month because we're introducing 30 new templates a month. And you'll notice that we kind of a reoccurring theme. There's going to be some templates in each collection that are just kind of above and beyond that. just have a lot more intricacy in detail, but we'll still stay with some of the cleaner, simpler graphical looks some of the classics. So you get that kind of variety and spice of life. I'm not sure how I feel about the Vikings design there. I'm a Green Bay Packers fan, but uh, it is Northern high school. So I think we're, we're okay there. You know, the only problem with the Vikings, are, their colors are so great. You know, they just have great colors. There's something about purple and gold. This really, really looks terrific together. So you'll notice, you would have noticed this, but a while back, in the spring, we changed the navigation in graphics flow and we changed it quite a bit. And the first thing you'll notice is when you land inside of graphics flow, now you are going to see your landing on design ideas, clip art and fonts. These are arranged at the top. And there's also a dedicated link now to art portal. And if you go to the dedicated link for art portal, you'll notice if you click on the three little three dots icon there. Um, you can copy your art portal link from here. You can view your art portal here, and then you can also manage your settings from here, um, for your art portal. So it's a subtle, um, change in navigation, but one of the things that we wanted to do was make it possible for, you know, people to just have the artwork first and foremost, cause it's kind of fun logging in and seeing the new artwork. So that's a, kind of a general navigational change. Um, couple other things, just kind of tips and things along the, the, the way that you should be aware of, you know, if you're going to be searching within templates, you have some options here. If you go to all design ideas, that's everything, but you can also just screen out on things that you previously downloaded. And if you think about that, they always have a green check next to them. This is your favorites. You know, if you downloaded it, probably it's because you like the design. And so this results in your favorites. And, you know, so I have 411 file, unique files I've downloaded. Once a file is downloaded and it has the green check, it doesn't count towards your download um, limit each month. It's you, once it's downloaded, it's not going to result in a new one. Um, also, you have a new button here. You'll notice manually hidden in the art portal. I now have the ability on individual files to go in and hide them in the portal. So let's say that I'm just not a big fan of pickleball and I didn't want to have pickleball graphics in my portal. I can hide an individual file, or you can also go and hide whole categories and keywords. And we're going to get into that a little bit later on. But in terms of navigating on both clip art and templates, you know, the basic ways that people navigate is they'll come in and select a category and maybe say all farm and ranch, or maybe they're going to say, I just want to see equestrian designs or just livestock show designs. That's one way of navigating, but another way of navigating is by style. And I think navigating by style is just a, a great way to kind of really narrow down something visually. And so if I go to style here and I just want to see just generally athletic designs, um, here's athletic designs. And maybe I want to pair this down into athletic designs that 
are just related to football. There you go. There's football athletic designs. I really like this design. That's a, that's a very cool design. And you'll notice, um, you have the customize button here now. So if you want to customize a design, you have the customize button provided you have a graphics flow lead account, you can customize this. And we'll get into that a little bit later, but I just wanted to kind of talk about some best practices for navigating and selecting artwork. And another thing here is if I want to see all football, but I'm not just limiting to athletic, just uncheck athletic and then there's football. So, and I'm only looking through downloaded files right now. So I'm not looking through all my files. So if I go over here and go to all designs, we went from 21 to 224. So you get a little bit of idea of my tastes and graphics just by looking at what I downloaded. And so the, that's the basic navigation. And that navigation is consistent with all the functionality of, of the software, including clip art. And what you'll see in clip art every month, you're going to see the design elements from the templates that are parted out into individual clip art. These are all the design elements. And there's some really fun stuff in here, like this pattern that you can utilize to create your own artwork from the ground up. If you just need design elements or layouts, or you want this cool sugar skull here, or this really neat looking elk, um, you have those elements parted out and they're always going to be at the top. Again, you can go to downloaded, not downloaded, and then you can man manually hide an element. So for instance, if you're just not into elk, because you had a bad experience at Yellowstone when you're a kid, you can go over here and just hide the elk. And to if I hide the elk, you'll notice it's got a little eyeball icon here. If I want to unhide the elk, I can go in and unhide it just by going in here and say, show an art portal. And if I just want to see all the clip art I've hidden, there you go. There's all the clip art I hid and it's a pretty cool elk. I don't really want to hide that elk. So I'm just going to go back here and show. So that's a, a new capability that we've added to the platform. Now, something very, very important is we did a huge upgrade to the fonts in graphics flow. And that font upgrade took us from about 374 fonts to 560 fonts. So we dumped, dumped in roughly another 200 and some or almost 200 new fonts into the platform. And it's very handy to have those downloaded and installed on your computers, especially if you're using Adobe Illustrator. If you're using Adobe Illustrator and you don't have the fonts installed, when you try to open a template, you're going to get a message asking you to, to locate that font. If the fonts are installed, you're not going to get that message. And that would be true on both a Mac or Windows operating system. If you're a CorelDRAW user, it's a little different because in the CorelDRAW file format that we're using, the fonts are embedded in the graphic. So if I download a CDR template and the font isn't installed, I'll still be able to edit the template. And where you, if you select the, the text, you'll notice there'll be an asterisk next to the, the font. What that's telling you is that the font is not installed on your computer, but it is available because it's embedded in the, in the actual CDR file format. So with that being said, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to download the whole font library. You just hit download and it's going to download a zip file. doesn't matter if you're Mac or windows makes no difference. Um, you can download the whole font set. And then what you can do is just go to the location where those files are at and you can unzip them. And Mac will just do it automatically. Windows, you can just right click and just say extract all. So I've extracted that folder and there's a lot of fonts to extract. And then once that's extracted, all the fonts will be available in the folder. And what you're going to want to do is to install them. But what you don't want to do is over install on top of the original font. It's not going to really hurt anything, but it's, it's just not necessary. And so when you install, you're going to get prompted to overwrite existing fonts. And you're going to say, nope, I don't want to do that for any of these. And once we get this with this set up, we'll show you how that works. So we're extracting all those fonts from the zip archive. And if you installed the previous set, you have around 60% of these already on your system, but we want to add the other 40%. Looks like we're almost completed. And I'm going to go to that folder 
right here. And I'm going to go inside the folder. And what I want to do is I'm going to do a search. In Windows, the easiest way to do it is just do a search asterisk dot ttf, which means true type font. That's going to pull up all the true fonts. I can select them all and right click and install. Not for all users, just hit install. And if you hit install, this is where you're going to get that little button that says, hey, this font is already installed. Do you want to replace it? And no, I don't need to replace it. I just want to add only the new ones. So I'll say, do this for all current items. And do you want to replace it? Nope, I do not because I don't need to. That's going to go really quick because I, already, I had these fonts already installed. If you don't do that step, it's not going to hurt anything. But there's there's really no reason to over install them. When you're done with that, then you can install the open type fonts, asterisk dot OTF and do the same same pro process. Select them all, control A, right click, install, and then don't overwrite them. If you're on a Mac, you're just going to take the folders and dump them into your, your fonts folder and they're just going to show up. So yeah, there's certain things that are definitely easier to do on a Mac, sure. So the next step, once we've got the fonts installed, is if we in, if we access our graphics program, we can use that font in any of our graphics programs. And in fact, they're even going to show up in Microsoft Word. So the any program that supports true type fonts and open type fonts will dis display those fonts. And so if I just wanted to take this font and just start typing in the text, it's going to be in my program, whether it's Illustrator, Curl Drive, even Photoshop, or even Inkscape or Affinity Designer, it's just there waiting for me. So Getting the fonts updated is really important. And if you're not sure you did that, or if you did an installation with us, um, you could just download it and just hit that no button when it asks to, and just to be on the safe side. And it'll tell you if any installed to say, we installed 17 fonts. So there you go. So another key change that we made to the platform revolves around file deletion. This was a thing that we were asked over and over again. It says, hey, you know, once I del delete a file, it's it's gone. So the one thing I can't help, you know, like even though Google Drive and some of these other things, you know, if you have a malicious employee that wants to go and delete a bunch of your files, um, I mean, we don't have any way of preventing that. Um, you know, if somebody has access to your files, chances are if you have an employee that, you know, you suspect to being a little bit malicious, um, you probably don't want to give them a log into your graphics flow or change their password. Um, but there's no way for us to to prevent somebody from going in and, and deleting files. And I, I think generally speaking, it's not a big issue for most companies because they have a, a local version of those same files on their, their client-based computers. But one thing you can do now is if I wanted to come in here on this file and I wanted to delete this file now, go down here and hit delete, I do have a deleted folder now. And so if I go to my deleted folder, I have the ability to restore that file. And so I don't have to, you know, I don't have to necessarily go in and, you know, delete it. I can delete it permanently. So if, if I go over here and I want to permanently delete this, I can do that. And I can select in list view and do multiple files, but we can actually just restore these too. And so if I'm going to restore these files, um, maybe I just want to restore that one, which I do. Um, I'm just going to hit recover and it's going to go back into the, the folder that I want to recover it to, in this case, Beaver Ranch. So I just recovered that file. Now, where, where this is important to understand is after 30 days, these files are going to get purged automatically. It's just, we're just holding them, same thing Google Drive does. We're just holding them there for 30 days. And while they're in storage, they're still in storage, so they're still counting towards your storage limit when they're in this deleted status. Once they auto purge, or once you permanently delete them, that'll free up space in your storage. So that's just something to, to take into consideration. Average vector file, if you're talking about a CorelDRAW based file, is going to be about 250K. Um, Illustrator files are a little bit bigger because they're uncompressed. Typically, um, Illustrator uncompressed Illustrator file is going to be about maybe same file, roughly one megabyte. And if it's a compressed Illustrator file, about half of that. So these vector files are not, you know, taking up a lot of space and 500 gigabytes of data storage. When you're talking vector files, that's, that's thousands and thousands of files. Now it's a little bit different if you're doing big giant Photoshop files, 
um, you can have a Photoshop file that's easily a gig or two. Um, so because they're bitmap format. So the new functionality for deleted is it just puts it into this little holding folder and then you can either permanently de delete or restore. And then you also have the ability to search for deleted files. So if you remember the file name or the tag that you tag that file, you can search for the file as well. So it's, I think it's pretty, pretty handy. And this is something that people requested and I'm glad we did it. And I think it's a nice improvement to the application What we're finding people are really becoming pretty disciplined about using graphics flow for art storage for a couple of reasons. Number one, it makes it really easy to catalog and find your artwork because we're generating file previews of all the common file formats, including DST files for embroidery. Um, this is a Adobe Illustrator file right there. Look at that beautiful file preview there. I can't click on the preview while I'm in deleted mode, but also we can apply keyword tags to these files. So if we have a file that we want to apply a keyword tag to, I could select all these files or just a few of them, what's up to me. But if I selected all these files and I wanted to go over here and add a tag, what I could do is just go over here and say, add a tag. And I already have a tag for Beaver's Ranch which is going to allow me to search for the word beaver or ranch to me and find all the files that are associated with. But the other thing, the reason that people are using this for file storage, in addition to these beautiful previews it creates is that you can store the, the production information. So if this is a direct to garment print and it, the dimensions here, and if you want to store the colors in here, you can, you can store colors. Um, you can put all the file details or here are some terms of file size, when it was created, dimensions, all that kind of fun stuff. So this is industry specific. This isn't like a generic file storage system like Google Drive or iCloud or Dropbox. This is really built for decorators and people that are um, utilizing graphics files. And incidentally, if we went in here and I selected all these files and I just want to download them all, um, I can just download a giant zip file of all my files uh, if, if I choose to do that, which is kind of handy. So that's the, the general idea behind the art storage and what we did in file deletion. Now, another major change that many of you are, are tuned into is the stock art customizer, but there's a really awesome part of the stock art customizer that folks don't necessarily you know, utilize. And I, I want to point this out. If, if I go in here and I want to customize this file, I can just click on customize, or I can just click on the file and click on customize. That is a functionality that's going to allow you to bypass a graphics program like Illustrator or CorelDRAW. And these files are different than like working within like say the Inksop designer or custom ink or something like that. This is the actual file that was created in Illustrator or CorelDRAW. We're actually editing on that that actual original file and the output format we're going to download is either going to be a pdf for adobe users as a universal format or a corel draw format for corel users with live text or if you're just wanting to create a little thumbnail preview or maybe load it into a store um one of your your e-commerce store you can download a png file but the the thing that folks don't necessarily realize is if if i go in and make changes to this file and we'll go kind of do that purple thing again. We'll see now, you know what? Actually, we're going to make that gold and I'm going to make the other color purple. So we're going to go over here and we do this deep purple in here. So if, if I go in here and I change this file and I save it, I can go back and re-edit this file and name drop it. So. I just created a little Cougar file. Actually, let's change it. I use this, this file in demos all the time. So I'm going to change that to red, hit apply. And then I'm going to change this to this navy blue right here. There we go. I'm going to save the file, but I'm going to show you how you can go back and re-edit it. So if, if I save this file and I go down here and I save it into Central Cougars and we call it Central Football, let's say 04, because I've done quite a few Central Football designs. 
Now, a couple things. Number one, I can download a format. So if I'm going to like load an Inksoft store with the graphic, I'm going to either download a PDF or PNG. If I download the PNG file, what's going to happen is this file is going to be um, non-editable. You can still do things like you can change colors and things like that, but we can't like edit the, the actual vectors in it. It's a bitmap. If we download the PDF file, that's different. I can bring in this into Illustrator, Photoshop, doesn't really matter and I can live edit this file. Now, something we're working on, a new enhancement that we're adding is the ability to shuttle weathered overlays on or off so we can turn them on or off. And the reason we're doing that is not everyone has an external graphics program. That's a real easy thing to set up in Illustrator or Corel to prep the file for, or even Photoshop for a weathered overlay, whether you're doing a direct to film transfer or a screen print or DTG, but it really to set up a weathered file properly, you do have to have a pro graphics program because it's a bitmap that sits over the top of the file and you have to be able to mask that bitmap in. There's, there's an extra production step. So what we're doing is we're adding a functionality just to toggle the overlay on or off. And there'll be some other kind of interesting um, editing aspects to it as well, but that's going to be the primary functionality. And so you don't have to bring this into an external graphics program to set up the, the overlay. You can just turn it off. So we've saved that file into my, my art, but maybe what I wanted to do is maybe I wanted to come back later and change this into the East Eagles. So I'm going to go into my central Cougars folder. I'm going to find that file right here. I'm going to click on it and I'm going to say customize and we're going to localize this. And I did just did this this morning. I did a whole, I had a whole slew of central Cougars files that I converted into um, East Eagles files because I'm setting up a store in Inksoft. There's a new feature in Inksoft that lets us clone a store and globally swap out all of the artwork from one store with artwork from another store. So for instance, I had a whole bunch of products that had this graphic on it. When I clone the store, I can go to this graphic and say, swap out every product with this graphic with the Eagles version. And then I'd go into the store and I would change the colors in the store for the Eagles and change the logo. And I've just copy the store. I've got all the same products, same pricing, same thing, but we just globally swap out the graphics. Really neat new feature we're adding to Inksoft. It goes live uh, next Wednesday. And so I'm under a little bit of pressure to record the video to showcase the feature, uh, but it's really an exciting feature. But with graphics flow, it makes it even better because all I have to do over here is just go over here and type in East and maybe type in 23 over here. Type in Eagles over here. Egales. That's where spell check is. See how it spell checks it with a little underline? And then go over here and change the colors. And so Eagles colors I've been using is this athletic gold. And I've been using a little bit different blue, this blue right here, a little bit more of a brighter blue. There we go. And then just going to save this file and here's the here's the magic i don't want to update the original design i just want to save as a new customized design i want to create a a variation of that design so i'm just going to save that into east eagles and i just created a variation and i'm going to use that file to populate some products in my store that's what i'm going to do so this is just a really great I, I could do some other things to this i could have moved eagles over so that the tail connected up better. I got all the ability to do that right in graphics flow and I probably should have done that. I could have just gone in here and said, continue customizing and then move that over. But in the interest of time, I just wanted to show you guys, that's a very powerful feature of graphics flow. I didn't have to go open up Illustrator. I didn't have to open up CorelDRAW. I didn't have to have any knowledge or, or experience in a professional graphics program. I could just do that in graphics flow in the customizer and th this has been my experience you know if folks that have known me from from a long time you know that the smart designer add-on software has always been my baby and i don't really use smart designer much anymore um, i pretty much use the stock art customizer because it's quicker and i don't have to open up corel and i can get just pretty much exactly what i want if i'm just name dropping a template swapping out clip art maybe swapping file fonts, maybe swapping colors. I could do that quite easily in, in graphics flow. And in my experience, it's actually much easier to change colors 
in the graphics flow stock art customizer than it is in illustrator or crawl or any other graphics program so i still have a fondness for smart designer and I, still certain things that i find really useful about it like text effects and tails and player names and numbers but for just editing a template and you know editing clip art it's it's just easier to do it in graphics and to that point i i don't think a lot of people realize that you can edit clip art just like you do a uh a piece of a, a design template. I can go over here. If I want to pre-color this before I download it, I can do that. I can just go and pre-color it before I download it. Just hit apply and change that to gold. See what it looks like. Or maybe I want to consolidate colors. So this is an easy way to consolidate it before I download it. So I'm going to take that color right there and just consolidate it um, before I download it. Now it's a two color. Maybe I want to make this black and white so what an easy way to turn this into black and white for laser engraving so these are some of the really handy tools with the customizer that you don't necessarily think of wow that's a really easy way to recolor clip art before i download it so i think that's just a, an awesome feature so what i want to do next is i want to talk about the art portal and art portal is a it's been a very well received feature a lot of our clients it's just become has become kind of a fundamental way that they do business they really promote it they utilize the art portal to set up even little showcases of um, subcategories of artwork like adding a showcase of um, track designs it's, it's quite easy to do that if you create a art approval and every art approval has its own url so if i have a track showcase to add this group of files to my art portal, all I need to do is to say share, invite, and grab this view only link right here, copy it right there. I got that link copied and I can add that into my portal. All I would do here is just go down to portal, go to manage settings, and just go over here to this section right here, navigation, and add link type that in put the type in what i want to say add the url and add it and it's just going to be in my portal you just have to make sure to say update navigation if you're going to do that i already have this one in here and if i want to change the location of it maybe put it right here i can just drag and drop it and then update navigation so that's that's actually live updated in my portal so that's a, a kind of a tip but I, I think it's something i would definitely suggest doing and i put different galleries of my art that I created, not in graphics flow, the stuff I created, plus graphics flow stock designs to the portal. This is a practice that we teach our customers. And I remember working with one of my clients that was a graphic designer and he just thanked me over and over again for that idea because he just not having to re resuscitate graphics from custom ink anymore. And he doesn't have to build everything from the ground up because what he did is he he went and curated his best designs that he's built over the years and created these little galleries based on the different markets he sells. And then he's added some stock designs in. And then he just sends out that link to that art approval to his customers say, hey, here's you know 10 ideas I put together. And one of them, he maybe localizes one of those to the customer's name and colors. And he's not having to do all this custom art all the time, but he's become really disciplined about changing you know, his uh, strategy for our work with clients and mainly because he, he couldn't grow his business. It wasn't sustainable for him to grow his business by doing custom artwork for every, every order he did, or especially small orders or orders that will have a reorder potential. So utilizing galleries, whether you're incorporating them into your portal or just sending out links to a gallery uh, is, a, is definitely a best practice and really, really smart and makes you look much more professional than probably 90% of your competitors. Most competitive customers and even the big companies don't have the ability to do that. And anyone with the graphics flow elite account and the art portal has the ability to do that. Just all you're doing is creating an art approval and taking that link and sending it out to the customer, or you're taking that link and embedding it into your portal. If you embed it in your portal, everybody can see it. So just share grab the link. If I want to send this out specifically to a one customer, I can grab the commenting link so that they can actually interface with me and add comments. Actually, that looks pretty good. That's a pretty sharp looking graphic. 
that was I customized that in the stock art customizer. So there you go. So some of the changes we made to the portal, and there's a lot. And so if I go down here to manage settings, let me kind of talk about some of the major changes that we made to the portal. You'll notice under stock art assets right here, it looks a little bit different. And there's a reason this looks different because I can go over here into design ideas and not only can I enable it, but I can enable categories. So right now I have every category turned on, but let's say I want to turn on every category except, um, let's see, maybe there's one category that I don't, maybe I'm Canadian. And so I want to take, I want to select every category except for patriotic because this is it's all american patriotic stuff i can do that so i can just go in and unselect patriotic and if there's subcategories in here um, i just want to select us i want to make sure usa is unselected but there's canadian stuff in here i think no it's all usa there you go it's all usa patriotic stuff. we should have called that category usa we do have some canadian artwork um, but under patriotic we put it in all USA artwork. I know if you're Canadian, apologize. We'll try to do better. So the, um, the ability to select the categories that you want to have in your portal or deselect them. And we have clients, they'll just come in here and they'll just deselect everything. And they'll notice they'll just add in sports mascots. Um, typically like the big popular ones, they'll do school sports mascots. See, I think those are the big ones. You could add like clubs and activities. That's also school type artwork. And now all of a sudden it's, you just have a sports specific portal. I don't want to do that because I want to have all the artwork in there. Um, but none of that's going to change until you update it. So that's one thing you can do. Um, now you can also hide by keywords. So let's say you just had a thing about pickleball. You just think it's silly. I like pickleball, by the way. Um, and you want to hide the word keyword pickleball, you could do that. Now, if you type in the keyword pickle, we have some graphics that have pickles on them. So you just, you hit the pickles too. If you type in pickle, it'll hide pickles and pickleball. If you type in the full word pickleball, it'll only hide pickleball. So you can go in and put in specific keywords that you may want to hide. And so any graphic that has that keyword and its keyword tags will be hidden. And it's easy to deselect that because you can just hit the little X button there. But you can also now set a default category. So in my portal, I've set the default category. The first thing I'm going to see in my portal is sports, which makes a lot of sense to me. Um, I like to kind of lead with sports, but maybe you're a faith-based business and you do a lot of work with churches and you want to go in and set the default category to, you know, like a faith category or a religious category or whatever category you want to set, you can do that. Or maybe you're doing a lot of resort wear graphics and you just want to do resort graphics as your default category, you can do that as well. And so that's, I think, a, a pretty nice enhancement. Under clip art, you can do exactly the same thing. Select categories, turn them on or off. You can come in here and hide um, categories by keyword. You can set a default clip art category. And then under here, um, I've got fonts enabled. And I personally, I think it's, it's actually really a good idea to enable fonts because it gives clients the ability to say, Hey, I really like this design, but with this scripty font. And I, I would encourage all of you to, to do that. I don't think there's any changes in here I made that I want to update. I don't think I did. So I don't really have to save any of that. So we'll, we'll, we'll get out of here. Uh, we already talked about adding, a, a art approval as a showcase to your links and also a good place to add your Facebook page. So, and, and I know some people, they don't have a good dedicated website. So if you go out and buy a domain, which you can buy a domain for $20, it'll give you two years. You know, I, I did that for my Craig Martins.com. I went to GoDaddy and I paid $20. Actually, I didn't do that. I paid $20 for the first two years. And then I didn't want to have to deal with it again. And they had a deal for like five years. That was like, 30 bucks. So I just extended it. So now, you know, for the, I don't have to worry about it for the next five years, but I own Craig Mertens.com. And so if you own Craig Mertens.com or like I do, I can forward that domain to my art portal. So when I go to my art portal, instead of seeing a kind of a random um, URL, what I see is 
craigmertens.com goes there. Now I was, I was looking at my portal and you'll notice that all the sports artwork is coming up there and it's coming up in order of, so the, the new stuff that we just did is going to be in there and you could take it even further. You could say, Hey, I just want to see football. Does it, maybe you're just really, you know, you have a football um, camp and you just want to show football graphics. You could do that too. But I was looking at this and I played around with the colors on here and I'm, I'm just not crazy about that, that green in here. That's just really not not working for me. I do have all these little sub links for all these little showcases. The main reason I do that is if I'm working for with a client, I can show them, you know, kind of what one of these, you know, the vertical market they're working in. It says, Hey, you do a lot of wrestling here. Let me show you some wrestling designs. So this is a way for me to shortcut to specific designs. But what you can do now, which is really different is you can update your design request form. But before I do that, I'm going to change my, I just don't like this color. And I'm going to change this to actually just like a kind of a deep, kind of a close to charcoal color. There we go. And I am welcome to our design collaboration portal. Um, welcome to our design. Let's see. Show, um, no, I don't want to say showcase. Yeah, I could say showcase. That's not bad. So we'll just update that. So that's updating my website. So if I come over here and I just refresh this, I think that looks a lot better. So I just refresh that. But the, the thing that I wanted to show you is this, we can add custom fields to the form. We, everybody asked for this and it was actually a prior, one of our number one features that we asked for. And, and it's something we, we had the ability to do this at Inksoft. So it wasn't a huge lift in terms of adding it. There's a lot of moving parts, but we already had kind of the components from Inksoft and that's, you know, what we built in here. So if this field right here, this tell us about your request, um, this is a default field. So you can change that, you know, if you want to say, tell us about your project, right? So I'm just going to change the, and that's, a, I've set that as a required field. Okay. And I have multi-line input on this one so they can go in and type in as many comments or notes as they want. I don't think there's a care. There's probably a character limit. I'll cut them off at some point, but I also added a custom field over here. Please specify your in hand date for this project. And I, under that particular field, I picked the option for date picker so they can go to a calendar and pick their date for when their project needs to be in hand. Um, who is your sales representative? So, I added that. That's a very common one. People, you know, they said, Hey, listen, I have multiple salespeople. So just put your salespeople on one line, Bob Martin, Roberto Martinez, Roberta Jones, seen a theme there. Don't know, don't have one yet. And I made that a required field there. So if I want to update this form, I can do that, but you'll notice right here, upload artwork. So you can use your portal as an artwork uploader for your customer. And where that's really handy is the client has their logo, like maybe in a PDF file or a PNG file, or maybe even an embroidery file. They can upload that file. It creates a preview so you can see the file without having to open it. And now you can grab that piece of artwork to swap out the mascot in one of our stock designs with their actual mascot. Another use case for that is the client will want to be able to upload source artwork to show, you know, you an idea of like, we like this design, but I really like the font from this design that I found online. And so they'll upload that and they'll put notes in. So I'm going to upload that form there real quick. And then I'm going to go over to my portal and then I'll just kind of walk you through what that looks like. So if the customer wanted to select this design and submit it for customization, they put their notes in, can you change to, they'll add it to their little cart and then submit design request. And here's a best practice. This is, I don't know if it's controversial, but this is the way I'd run it if I was running my business. And this is the way we did it when we had our decorated apparel business. We said, hey, listen, if you need custom art, we can accommodate you. But we have a minimum order, at that point, we had a minimum order quantity of 144 units to do custom art. And if they didn't meet that minimum order quantity of 144 units, then one of two people had to pay for it. Either the customer had to pay an art development fee or the salesperson would have to pay for it. And let me tell you, the salespeople never wanted to pay for it. So that, uh, I don't know if it ever happened, but trying to condition your clients like, Hey, listen, my time is valuable. And if, you know, if you want me to create custom art, you know, I have to charge you a minimum 
art fee. And I can only give you one free revision. After that, I have to charge you for revisions. And I need to have seven to 10 days to develop that artwork, you know, and everybody wants immediate gratification these days. So if you reposition it like this, it says, Hey, I can still do custom artwork for you, but I got to charge you. Or if you go to my portal and I'll send you a link and you find some ideas of a couple different things that you like, add those designs in there, fill it out, put your notes in there about what, you know, you know, your, you know, any kind of specifics that you have about that art. And then, you know, make sure when you fill it out, give me your in-hand date and, you know, let's pick a, let's pick a salesperson in here, Roberta. She's going to be scoring big here and get this all filled out. Pretty sure that's not a real email, but you never know. And here's the thing, I can upload that piece of art. So I go over here and select the art file, select the art file, and I'll just select that. When this comes to me, I'll get a preview of this. And then incidentally, um, I included an art file with a font that I liked. So they submit it, they get their little confirmation that they've submitted it. It's uploading the art right now. I'm going to get a notification via email and within the app. And it's also going to create a design request for me. So they're getting this. They got emailed. I got emailed. The email I got has a link. Look, it even has a little preview of the art that they requested. That's kind of a nice touch. I go into my email, I click on the link. That link is going to go to my design request. Once I go to that design request, I can just pull up the request right there. I can read out all the notes. I can assign it to a salesperson. I just sent myself an email when I did that. Put any notes in there for production. I would probably have sent that to Roberta because, oh, we need to go this, this is Roberta's customer. So I had Roberta would have an account in their graphics flow and I just pick Roberta's email. And let's see here. They need it by 929. They included a font, so they like that font. All right, well, that's easy enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go over here and to start editing, yeah, I just edit this file, save it, bounce it back to them, and you might put a note, hey, I don't have that font. Um, I do have that font because that's a graphics flow file. But this is the, the idea, is to add that level of collaboration to the portal and the, the key to the portal is disciplining your clients to use it and letting people know you have it. You can't, it's not something where you just drop a link under your web page and hope people notice. It, it's definitely something that you have to promote. And you have to, you know, kind of draw a line in the sand with your clients. Right. Say, if you want me to do custom art, I can do it, but I need seven to 10 days and I have to charge you an art development fee. But if you go and look through my 7,000 design templates and use that as a starting point, I can have something back to you next business day and I don't have to charge you any art fees. And then that gives you the opportunity to go in and really, you know, put some TLC into the design. So really bring it to life, you know, add, you know, swap out the fonts, really pick a stellar piece of clip art, um, add a, a couple extra colors, you know, do all the things that really bring a graphic to life. And some of these, like, this is just a cool graphic right here. I wouldn't really change anything. I would just probably just change the text. That'd make a great little patch or an embroidery. Um, applique full front or make a sticker or a decal. There's a, there's a lot I can do with that right there. So that's the, the example of the, the file. And by the way, if there's an art approval associated with that, and I move this into an art approval, um, what's going to happen is it's going to have a link to the art approval down here too. That's something new that we added. I think I was a, kind of a nice little touch and you guys requested that. So that was a good idea. So that's the, the basic crux of the major changes. I do want to do one thing and I want to show, because I know we got a bunch of Inksoft people on here, but I'm going to go into my portal and I'm going to go to manage settings and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to go down to embed code. I'm going to copy my embed code here because what I want to do is I'm going to add this into a store for an Inksoft customer. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my central boosters kind of demo store here. 
and I'm going to go in and edit that store and I'm going to add, I'm going to add the portal. I've already actually already have a portal in there. I'll delete my portal and add it back in. So this is a store I set up for a school group. And remember we, I talked about before, you'll be able to clone this store, change the colors and the logo, and then have it swap all of the graphics anywhere where this graphic is used. I can swap this graphic out everywhere it's used with the central Eagles version uh, and all the products there, all the pricing there, you just clone the store. Artwork is, can be swapped out, really wonderful feature. But I just want to add an art portal to my um, store. So the way the way you do that is you add a page. So I added a page and I called it art portal. And then on that page, I'm just going to say edit the page and I'm going to delete this content block and I'll show you how I got to this point. So we're going to get rid of that content block. So all I'm going to do is hit the plus button here. And then I'm going to go over here to where it says content block. With the content block, you can load custom HTML code. So this is just text editing here. But if you click on this right here, that's HTML code. Copy and paste. Hit done. And now your portal is embedded into your Inksoft store. And here's the neat part. You don't have to make this public. So if you don't want this Central Cougars people to be designing, you don't have to do that. But you still have the designer that the store manager can go to to create artwork or to name drop something. And I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean by that. I'm going to discard these changes because I already had this all set up. But right now in this store, I'm logged in as an admin. So I'm logged in as the administrator of the decoration shop that's set up this store. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out as an admin and then I'm going to log in as the store manager for the customers. So I'm Central Boosters, president of Central Boosters. And this is the store that Craig's Creations set up for Central Boosters. So I have a store manager account that was created for me. I set up my email and I can log into my store to see what's going on. So I'm going to log into my store and I want to see what's going on. So I get in here and I'm like, hey, what, what, what have we got for orders or anything? And I'm like, oh, wow, I forgot to, uh, we've got this quote in here. Oh, I paid it. We're good. Um, then you go into orders and you're looking at it like, oh, wow, I forgot to pay for this order. So I can click on view order details and pay for it. Or maybe I already did this order and I wanted to initiate a reorder. And so I'll go in here and initiate a reorder, put the new sizes and quantities in there, hit submit. My sales rep gets an email. The sales rep takes that um, original order, clones it, updates the costs, sends it back to you with the pay now button. That's pretty slick. But over here is one of my favorite parts, which is my designs. So any design that the store owner created in the things off designer is residing in here. And if I wanted to go in here and change this design right here, I can just say edit and designer. The customer can self-service. They can change products. They can change whatever they want. They can change colors. Maybe they wanted to change central soccer to central lacrosse. They can self-service on that. And then they can come over here and maybe, you know, if they wanted to change colors, they could, they could certainly do that. Maybe different, a little different blue that could do that. If they wanted to add a piece of clip art and they wanted to do that. And there's a few graphics, about 1200 graphics flow designs in Inksoft now, including the, the better clip art. <laughs> it's all graphics flow clip art. Um, let's see, we'll pull up a mascot here. I like that one. It looks good. And we'll put that mask, that looks really good. So we'll put that mascot in there and then let's change the colors of the mascot. So we're going to make that gray. We're going to make that the red that's already in use. We're going to make the other part. Actually, that looks pretty good. Um, I think I'm good with that just the way it is. And then what they do is they can just save the design. I like that. So I'm going to save it. Cougar Pride, that's going to save it in their account. They're going to save the design. And then here's the thing. They don't have to, they don't have to check out, but if they wanted to get a price, they could. So if they wanted to get a price, they could just go to next step 
and maybe they only need six and they're going to get a price, Inksoft is going to go in and quote this with the direct to garment print. Because so I got a rule set up for this store that anything below 12 units is going to be quoted as a direct to garment print. But if they go over here and they add more quantities, then we're starting to get into price breaks. So anything over 12, 12 or over, it's going to quote it as a screen print. That's kind of low. Price should be 24. But then as we're going through this and they're getting an updated quote right here, it's pricing this as a screen print. And as I put bigger quantities in, this price is going to go down because I've set up my pricing logic. And then they can go and if they update their cart with this and they don't check out and pay, I'm getting a report every day that says, hey, this person designed this graphic and they have an abandoned cart. What do you want to do? And what I can do is I can go into Exop proposals and fire off a, a proposal saying, hey, I noticed you abandoned your cart on this design. So I can grab the design because it's in the account now. And I said, we have a sale on Fruit of the Loom, great t-shirts. It's a little bit cheaper. And instead of nine seventy nine, I can do the same shirt for eight fifty. And you send them the proposal, they have a, a proven pay button, boom, done. This, this is the modern and smart way of doing business. And so what people are doing is they're using their portal to kind of narrow down the artwork that's available to the customer so they can collaborate with the customer on our work. They're taking those graphics, they're populating them into proposals, they're populating them into products that are in Inksoft stores, and they're they're combining the two. And that's where Graphics Flow and Inksoft are just so brilliant at working together. And you know, especially since Inksoft is a is a graphics driven platform. But one one last thing, if I didn't want the designer to be available to the general public, but just available through the customer portal, it's a real easy thing to do. So all I have to do is I have to log in as an admin again. So I'm not going to sign in as with my admin account. And I'm going to go to my style editor and I'm going to go to my art portal page and I'm just going to toggle it off. And so it's still available to the customer within their customer portal, but it's not public facing it. That button turned up, but I like having it on there. So I'm not going to do that because that's a really nice little touch, I think. So that's the kind of the summary of what's new in graphics flow. And I want to thank everyone for coming and hanging out with us on the webcast today. We'll certainly see you in a couple of weeks on the next one. Um, and the next part is if you guys have live questions you'd like me to answer, I'm more than happy to do that. Yeah, Karen had indicated um, adding the art portal to stores. This is a best practice. When when you're creating a store in Inksoft, the 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 best way to create that store, let, let me kind of show you. If I, if I go over here to store admin and I go into all the administrative things within the store, okay? So over here under designer, I have the designer enabled right now. Now I can turn it off, but I have it enabled in this store. So you see where it's on. Notice there's a button that says e-commerce. I can enable the designer, just have it as a design tool where people can just save artwork, but they can't get pricing and check out. So I can just use it as a design tool for people to save artwork and so I can quote them. So I can do that. So that's what that button does. I've got my designer turned on, but this is where you add the design categories that you want to add to your store. So you can just clone that from another store. So if I go over here and I the Inksoft um, demo account's got every category in it, I could just say select all and add all the design categories or maybe just pick sports ones. It's up to me. Um, the first time you do the designer, you can also pick the products that you want to offer in the store. And so those products will transfer to the next store. So if I have a set number of products, like in this particular store, if I go over here, the products that I'm offering in this particular store um, that I, I built out is my quote product catalog. Um, these are all my, my pre-decorated products right here. Okay. But I also have products that are blank and these are all the blank products that I added. Whoops. Let's delete that. I was in the middle of building something. So these are all the blank products that I added to my store. So these are all the blank things that I have. And so if you have your store set up exactly the way you want, Karen, then what you can do is when you copy this store over to a new, this catalog of blank products comes over. Now all of the artwork comes over 
all your products now come over, including all your pre-decorated products. And if you have products in your store and you swap out the artwork with the Eagles version of this, it will automatically swap the artwork on the product itself. So if you had seven products that had this embroidery design on it, all seven products would would swap. And then what you would do is you'd come in here, just you'd mix up the, you'd put the new colors in, you know, maybe the new color is gold and uh, navy. You can go in and swap the logo out, swap the header out. Um, you can do all of that. It's just a matter of now localizing this store with the information from the other store and you have something completely custom and you just have not a lot of work to do. You know, here I already have a little banner that I created for the Eagles. So here it is, the East Eagles now. Change the color, come down here, edit this, change that color to, you know, say gold. Got to be a little bit more in the orange tones. Eh, getting there. So that's the, I'm going to discard these changes, but that's, that's the basic concept. Um, and that's why adding a designer as default to every store is smart because you don't have to display it in the store. You can turn that link off, but you have it available if the customer wants to do some designing behind the scenes or if you want to name drop a template. So best practice for a graphics flow user, I could create templates in graphics flow that are my standard school templates. So we'll go over here. These are my standard school templates, okay? And then it's just super easy for me to go and change this to another sport and populate a store, but I could take it a step further. And this is a real power user thing. I could take just this part, convert all the text to curve. So this is just a big old piece of clip art. It can't be changed. And then I can go into the Inksoft template creator function and then type in, because we have all the graphics flow fonts are in Inksoft. And I could go in and type in this same font with the word baseball, but it's live now. And so if the customer goes into their customer portal, they can change baseball to soccer to volleyball, but none of this can change. This is all locked, but this part they can change. And so that's a, that's a whole nother power user type of thing. So there's just a lot of, we, we just had this discussion on our management meeting yesterday about all these power user things that you can do in Inksoft that customers are just aren't aware of. And that's why I record out all the videos on, on both the graphics flow channel in the Inksoft channel, um, the information on uh, setting up the art portal um, with all the new functions, there's a video on that in the Graphics Flow um, YouTube channel. So thanks again for coming and hanging out with us.